as Zoom like to tell us. And uh, cool. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, cool. Well, uh, Julie and I just wanted to take a minute to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Dustin Wolf. I do all of our marketing here at the Chamber, uh, which means I do all of our marketing and communications for our three divisions. Uh, so hopefully you know as Chamber members that we have the Shawnee Chamber, we also have the Shawnee EDC, we also have Visit Shawnee, which is the tourism department. On top of that, we also have um, an all-in Shawnee kind of lifestyle brand that we launched, um, which we can kind of talk a little bit as we go through how we got that launched and off the ground. And on top of that, we also do a little bit of marketing with for the downtown Shawnee brand that we launched last year too. So we do a lot of marketing over at the chamber. It's a big part of what we do um, as far as marketing the city, the community, communicating directly to our chamber members, um, uh, you know, making sure that we're promoting events. Uh, we do a lot of different stuff. We do long form kind of editorial content um, with the Shawnee magazine. That's something that we work a lot on. But we also do kind of small stuff like promoting events and making sure we're just communicating directly with our members. Um, I also worked at Visit Kansas City before this, which Visit Kansas City is exclusively a destination marketing organization. So pretty much their full time operations are revolved around marketing the entire Kansas City area in Kansas City, Missouri to tourists and prospective tourists and convention and meeting and sports planners all across the city or all across the region, all across the nation, even around the world too. Um, so got a lot of good marketing experience there and I was our marketing coordinator when I first started out of college. Um, and then uh, worked in a different role there too for a little while. Outside of the chamber, I also do all of the marketing for Kansas City Ultimate Frisbee. So if you know what Ultimate Frisbee is, it's like a sport that people like to play where they throw the disc down a field. It's kind of like a mixture of football, soccer, and uh, with a Frisbee. And it's actually a pretty th uh, thriving community of a few hundred people who play. But I do all of our marketing for our leagues, promoting our leagues, different tournaments that we do, events, special promotions. So I kind of like to do that in my free time. And I mentioned that because that's just another little bit of marketing stuff that I do. Um, that's, that's about me. Also, I did go to the uh, University of Kansas Journalism School. So go Jayhawks, big night on Monday. <laughs> that, I'll turn it over to Julie to let her talk a little bit about herself. I know she has something very uh, in common with me with what I just said. Uh, yes, I'm also a fellow, fellow Jayhawk journalism grad, and so I feel like I'm still recovering from that game on Monday. I was laughing because I didn't, I kind of spaced it out, but Tuesday morning we had to go do like a half day challenge course. <laughs> like we all roll up like super tired. So anyway, but it was a, a great tired. So yes. Rock Chalk, and sorry for offending anybody else on that call. Um, but I'm Julie Brightup. I am the communications manager for the city of Shawnee. I've been here uh, just almost six years now. And before that, my uh, prior career was all, all involved in local television news. So I was uh, most recently an executive news producer for the night side shift at KCTV5, and I was there for about 14 years. Um, before that, I worked at WIBW in Topeka and uh, really enjoyed local news. Uh, not a great schedule available for having two young kids, which I do, and they're home, and I have threatened them to stay upstairs because we have a late start day today. So if they pop in, I apologize, but they have been threatened. Um, I also write for the Kansas City Mom Collective. It is a local group that's part of a, a larger chain called the City Mom Collective, and it's uh, they're very active on social media. Um, also, obviously, have a website where we write blogs and uh, microblogs and things like that. So it's a really cool community. Um, it was very helpful when my kids were younger, and now it's just a really cool environment to be part of. And I constantly am stealing ideas from them uh, for marketing ideas and everything. So it's um, just another great place to um, get kind of a different experience with marketing, like Dustin was saying with his um, Ultimate Frisbee, which I didn't know. So that's, I'm learning something new as well. <laughs> okay, but enough about me and I'll turn it back over to Dustin. Cool. And I think one thing that I would add about both Julie and I is that we both um, are kind of one person shops, at least for the time being. Um, I know Julia is bringing on a second person, which is great. Um, but I think that's probably something that we can all relate to on this uh, call. I know we have about, uh, nine to 10 people on it. Um, so Julie and I both pretty much are the one person that everyone in the or their organization go to, goes to for a lot of the marketing needs that they'll have. So I think we can talk a lot about the tools that we use that help us with our schedules and getting everything done that we need to, uh, what we prioritize, but also kind of how we balance, um, you know, how we get everything done that we can. 
Um, so we'll talk a lot about that as we go through. So what we really wanted to do is we wanted to start kind of just on or really go through five big topics in marketing that a lot of people will just ask questions about. Um, and we'll just talk about those subjects. We'll talk about the tools that we use. We talk about our tips, how we've improved our skills in those. And the first one, and I think it's really relevant because I know when I first started, I was like, I don't know anything about this. Um, I, this is not what I went to school for, and uh, but I still got to get it done, and that's graphic design. Um, so one of the big tools that we'll, or what we'll kind of go through is some of the things that we use. I know Julie uses, and she's kind of mentioned this to me, or has used in the past Canva. Um, so graphic design is something that obviously is very um, intimidating if you don't feel like you have an artistic touch. But the good news is, is there's a lot of tools out there now that um, will offer graphic design kind of shortcuts, templates, um, easy ways to get things done. Uh, as I kind of mentioned, Canva is one of those. It's a uh, it's an online tool. If you just Google Canva, you'll find it. Um, but basically, it's one that you can go in, you can upload your brand colors, um, you can uh, you know upload your logo, and then you can start creating all kinds of different graphics, banners, templates. I think you can do everything as far as like printed materials, you can do, uh, you know, Facebook event graphics, you can do uh, posters, you can do I think you can even almost start to do video and different stuff like that in Canva. A lot of the marketing tools try to be a one stop shop. So Canva is something I would definitely suggest. Um, I think to kind of take a step back, one thing that's really important in graphic design that I would suggest for everyone is to make sure you do know your brand colors and to make sure that you do have um, the different types of um, colors that you need to keep in mind. You'll, you'll traditionally need to know the CMYK version of your colors. That's like the print version. You'll also need to know the RGB version of your colors and the hex code versions of your colors. Those are like the digital and the web versions. And then you also wanna make sure that you have high resolution and low resolution, resolution versions of your logos. And that's really for your own internal use for when you use Canva or you use any uh, graphic design tools, but also if you're ever gonna send that stuff over to a printer um, for anyone. So just another little tip as you kind of put some uh, stuff down in your notes, make sure you have high resolutions, make sure you have low resolutions, make sure you know all your brand colors. I like to keep a handy dandy like one page sheet right by my desk that literally has all the colors, all of our logos, our typefaces, different things like that. That's really important when it comes to any kind of graphic design, even if you're not a heavy graphic designer, um, but kind of, you know, getting having to do just a little bit of it. Um, can't, and like I said, Canva is a really good tool. I also use, I personally, if you want to dive a little deeper into all of the Adobe softwares, you have Photoshop, you have Illustrator, you have um, InDesign, you have all these different ones. If you were just going to use one for specifically for graphic design, I would use Illustrator. I think it's the easiest tool to use as far as kind of changing the different graphics out, modifying text, adding images, doing stuff to it. Photoshop is also a really easy tool too. Um, there are tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos out there. And my big suggestion to anyone for graphic design is don't be afraid to try, fail, and then YouTube things and see how do I make this look better. Or if you just want to kind of take an easier route to feel free to use like a Canva or any other tools. Julie, do you have anything to kind of add to what I to mentioned to? What do you guys use at this city? Yeah, I totally agree. So when you were saying we're a one-stop shop, you're absolutely right. And so I am always generally looking for the, quite honestly, the fastest and easiest way to get something out and make it look, you know, three quarters of the way professional at least. Um, so yeah, we almost always, or I almost always primarily use a Canva. Um, it, it's really nice because it has, I mean, it takes some playing around in it, but I think once you kind of get the hang of, it's just, it's so easy to use once you get the hang of it. I mean, you can change out colors. They have stock photos in there. You can upload your own images and videos. Um, like Dustin said, it's real, um, it's really great to be able to customize with your own brand colors, your logo. Uh, it's just all very customizable. And then what I also enjoy is you can uh, make a graphic and then you can automatically resize it. So, you know, it's going to be like one certain size for a Facebook event cover, or maybe we use a certain size for like on our website, that home image. So if I'm making a graphic for that, I can easily resize that, um, you know, Instagram, Twitter, all of that kind of, they sometimes take different sizes. 
And um, so that's what I really like about it. And then if you want to make a flyer out of it, you can do that. So um, it's nice that you're not having to remake the same thing over and over. You can just resize it. Um, so I completely agree. Um, Canva is what I use 99% of the time. And it, yes, just everything that Dustin said is nice. It just takes um, a little bit of playing around. And then once you get used to it, um, it's, it's really fast and efficient. Yep. Oh, yeah, that would definitely agree. And the one little thing that I would add to that is if you do have something that you really feel like you need to um, kind of dive deeper in, it's going to take a lot of graphic design, I would encourage, you know, looking for maybe a freelancer. Um, a lot of times there's a big difference between an agency and a freelancer. An agency tends to be a company that has tons and tons of professionals on it. You know, they're going to have account managers and uh, different types of uh, marketing people on it, whereas a freelancer might be a solo entrepreneur. A lot of times freelancers will charge just by the hour. They'll be a little cheaper. They'll be a little more entry level. We have a freelance graphic design member at the chamber. So if you need a referral, we're happy to give that. Or uh, there's a lot of uh, different ways that you can find freelancers just through the internet. Um, or you can look up, there's a local graphic design association that people, uh, freelancers will tend to be a member of. Um, and so that's one thing I would suggest is if, you, if you're if you like, I don't wanna do any of this graphic design or I don't mind doing Canvas stuff, but I have bigger, heavier things I need to do. Uh, so I would suggest looking into a freelancer if you're trying to uh, work with a modest budget. Okay, if you have any questions as we kind of go through the different topics, feel free to uh, send them in the question uh, in the chat. Uh, or you can always unmute if you want to ask a question too. I think uh, we definitely want to be able to answer the questions and Julie and I'll uh, answer them to the best of our ability. So, okay, so the oh, next- Oh, and Dustin, I was, I was going to really quickly mention we have Biteable up there and I think I added that. So uh, that's a, it's a website just called Biteable.com. And if you ever venture into any kind of video work, this is like a- uh, they have a free, I think they have a free version and a paid version. The paid version is um, pretty cheap as well, pretty affordable. Um, but these are kind of like those animated videos that you can basically pick your different scenes. Um, so we use those a lot as like explainer videos. Um, I'm trying to think of one that I, well, or actually, so Downtown Shawnee has a scarecrow contest every um, fall and the businesses take part in it. So when we announce the winner, um, you can, again, upload your own images, upload your own video. Um, so we do like a fun little um, video set to music um, with the different pictures to announce the winners. So um, that's another kind of video version. Um, that's another great tool if you're looking to just make a quick kind of animated explainer video for anything um, to do with your business or just to, you know, just to generally promote your business. And same thing, they have video templates in there as well. Well, um, it really is pretty user friendly. And so that's just another very affordable resource that you could check into for sure. Great suggestion. Okay, cool. Taking the next one. And Julie, I know you were going to kind of kick us off on the next subject. Yeah, uh, so social media. And again, as Dustin said, please feel free to unmute and ask questions or, or chat them in or anything. Um, you know, I, without knowing how much experience kind of everybody on here has with it, I just wanted to mention a few basic things. If you don't have social media pages, I would get them. Um, I think that they are very important. And I've just seen in my last almost six years at the city, a real shift in how people are communicating with us at the city. And while we are not necessarily selling anything, in my vision, we are doing a lot of work with educating, informing, getting words out about programs, services, events we have coming up. So it's essentially the same thing. We're just not really selling anything. So, but it, but we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to get the word out, trying to get more engagement, um, trying to get more customers, or in our case, get more people in the community engaged in what we're doing. Uh, so if you, if you don't have a presence on social media, um, I would get one. And um, if you're trying to pick and choose, um, I would probably do Facebook and Instagram for sure. Um, I think that my theory kind of in communication is that we want to meet our people wherever they are and wherever they're most comfortable. So there are a lot of people who really only communicate with the city via Facebook through Messenger. There's another group of people that will send me DMs on Twitter, and I don't think they're on any other platform. Same with Instagram, Nextdoor, um, all of that. So if you aren't on social media, I would get there. Um, it can definitely seem a little 
uh, intimidating, I think, at first, because it's like this big platform, there's a lot going on. Um, but definitely having a presence there and having another place for your uh, customers, for your communities to be able to find you as a resource. Um, you just you just want to be part of the game, right? You want to make sure that you have a presence in in the game. Um, so a couple really basic things, um, you know, when you're when you're doing a post on anything, make sure that you have a picture, a graphic, a video, something like that to showcase it. Um, if you just and, and not a lot of people do this anymore, but if you just do like a text only Facebook post, it just gets a little lost in the shuffle. Um, I, I quite honestly don't spend a ton of time getting worried about the algorithms of social media because it, it, they change daily, uh, truthfully, and it's hard to keep track of when you're a one shop stop. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't as much get super worried about that if you're if you're just trying to get the word out. But but I will say you will always get better visibility and you will find your post in more feeds if you have a picture, a video, something that will grab people's attention for sure. Um, I also think that it's really important to um, encourage engagement. So, you know, asking people to comment on things. So whether that's, um, it's, uh, sorry, this is really sad, but uh, telling that I know this, tomorrow's National Beer Day. And so um, for our breweries, that's like a perfect day to post, you know, something about National Beer Day. Maybe you're offering a dollar off draws. So, you know, some sort of engagement with that, asking people what their, you know, if, if you're a brewery, what's your favorite drink here? Um, really encouraging that engagement because the more likes you get, the more um, reactions to the post and the more comments you get, the more that will push that post out on other people's platforms as well. So simple, I mean, you would be really surprised at how much people want to talk about themselves. And um, so if you ask a simple question like that, people are going to answer. And, um, and then especially if you're also offering like a dollar off draws or whatever it is, or if it's National Pizza Day, or I mean, there's a day for everything. Um, you can just search like National Day calendar and it has them all on there. Um, and so that's another way to really kind of engage and take part, um, especially as it relates to your business. Um, I would also say to make sure that you are, um, or another good tool is, uh, especially in Shawnee um, or in our local area, is if you're partnering with another company for something, make sure you're tagging their accounts, because then you are not, so say, uh, I mean, I keep going back to the breweries. I'm so sorry. But um, the breweries do it very well because they have the food trucks who come in, right? So then, you know, they're posting about Taco Tuesday at Transport. And so Transport is tagging whatever taco truck they have. So then not only are they reaching Transport's audience, they're also reaching um, the taco truck's audience, right? Which it, which it might not be the same, but that cross promotion is great on both ends. So if you have any opportunities to do that or shameless plug to like take part in any city events, um, tag us, we will share, you know, we'll comment on your stuff. Like we have Moonlight Market coming up. A lot of our local businesses are awesome in taking part in that. Um, it's just all good ways to get your name out there and maybe hit an audience that you haven't hit before. Um, so, and yeah, and then like I said, contests, um, people love free stuff. So if you have a coffee mug, a, um, I don't know, a t-shirt a, a is, you know, really a jackpot. Um, anything like that, that you can hold some sort of contesting. Um, I think that those always tend to do well. Um, and then, and then I will also say we have probably seen the biggest growth um, from the city side on our Instagram account. Um, there are just a lot of people there. And it's a, um, I think that for us, Instagram is a little bit of a, I don't want to say a, a terribly younger audience because I'm not young, but it's a lot of um, middle-aged women, moms like me, right? That's that's what it is, and then some, and then younger people as well. So, and you know, as we all know in marketing, it's usually me, like people like me who are making the financial decisions, right, for their families and stuff. And so, a lot of those, like they always tend to say that you know, women in a certain age category are the are the big buyers. So, if you're trying to hit me, um, I'm on Instagram and like, I'm, you know, looking at um, not only like different accounts, but also the Instagram stories is a really engaging way. 
um, to do it. So I know it can seem, seem overwhelming. So my basic tip would be just to be on it, make to, to be on social media. It's, it's a thing, it's not going away. And um, then really just do what you can to encourage engagement. Um, I'll also talk really quickly about um, scheduling. So there are a lot of different tools that you can use to schedule posts. Um, this can come in really handy if you're a smaller business, you don't have a ton of time to be dedicating to social media every day. If you have some sort of a scheduler, it really is nice for like those national days, or if you know you have a certain sale coming up, or if, um, you know, there's a week that is, you know, I don't know, you're having an open house or some sort of an event or something like that. You can use some of those tools to schedule that out. So then you're not really having to think about it and be like, oh, I forgot to post about this yesterday. You can more schedule it out. So um, there, there are a variety of ones. The city uses one called Zoho. Um, it's a it's a really, in the scheme of scheduling, a really affordable option. It's about um, $300 a year, cheaper than that if you don't have um, as many accounts, I think. And so, and I think there also might be a free version um, of that. You can also schedule native through the platform. So Facebook has its own scheduler that is great. Um, the reason I like Zoho or some of these other ones is because you can schedule on multiple platforms. Um, so it's nice to be able to go in there, write your post, you know, say I want it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and then hit hit send or hit schedule for next week or whatever. Um, so those are some things to research. And um, I know we're just kind of like, you know, uh, high level talking about it, but if you guys ever have any questions about it or want to see what any of that kind of looks like from the back user end, um, I would be more than happy to, to show that. Um, the other thing I would say is to, um, as Dustin wrote on here, be positive, fun, and find your voice. Um, you Social media is, so, well, I shouldn't say it's supposed to be fun. Um, in my view, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, sometimes it can definitely take a turn, but like just being there, being the presence, having fun, taking part in it. Um, you know, if something funny happens in your business, um, posting about it, you know, just little things like that. I think you would be really surprised um, at how well they do. Um, we, Shawnee is obviously taking part in the Parade of Hearts and um, that has done amazing wonders for our engagement. So like an example for you all would be get your team together and go to one of the hearts and take a picture, tag the city, tag Parade of Hearts. Um, I just, people are loving that. Like they're, I mean, we'll, we'll, we will be happy to share that. That'll help get the word out. But it just shows that you're kind of engaged in the community. You're part of it. Um, you're in there. And while it's not necessarily driving a certain thing, um, it's a fun thing and I guarantee it will get um, engagement. So that's just a few, a few quick tips um, on my end. Oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing I would say, um, if you do get on there and you feel comfortable um, going live, like with Facebook Live or Instagram Live can also be a really fun option. We do this a lot with uh, Moonlight Market. Um, any of our, our events, a lot of times um, I'll go live on there just to show people like, hey, we're setting up, here's what you can expect, um, anything like that. But this could really be used on a lot of different areas. If you have a business where you're uh, making something, like if you make banners and flyers, um, I think you would be really surprised to see how many people would find that interesting to go do a live of that process, right? We don't know what it looks like. Um, it's probably a lot on computer, but then the printing out and everything, it doesn't have to be a long thing. It doesn't have to be a high production. I do everything on my cell phone. Um, you don't you don't need a lot of special equipment for it, which is nice. So um, any of those behind the scenes looks um, tend to be really popular or meet the team or you know anything like that. People um, are nosy and they wanna know what's going on. And so uh, when you are able to do that, it's um, just another great way to get the word out about your business, what you do, and then people might be like, oh, yeah, I could definitely use them to do this and this and this. So just, just a couple tips there. Yeah, and I would just add a few little things to that. Um, I think one of the big things that 
Julie mentioned was scheduling out posts as there's all those different tools. Um, my routine for doing that, and I'd be curious to know what yours is, Julie, and kind of how you do your routine for scheduling. So I usually schedule all of my social media out about a week in advance. I try not to do it anything too further because if things change, uh, you don't want to forget about something and then all, this, all of a sudden, you know, something popped up on your feed that you forgot about. And I usually try to make sure that I'm posting on Facebook. Uh, you know, the chamber does a lot. We do a lot of events. We do a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on that we try to post about. So I really try to keep Facebook about one to one to two times a day. Um, Twitter, you know, you can go really a lot. Uh, the frequency of how much you post on Twitter doesn't change a lot. Um, and then from a LinkedIn, we actually use LinkedIn a lot at the chamber. So one thing I would also kind of add is think about what type of business you are. If you're kind of more consumer facing business, definitely Instagram. And even if you are a business, business to business, Instagram can be a good one. If you're more business to business, LinkedIn's probably a little bit more your territory. Um, one thing you can do on LinkedIn is you can tag individual people from posts that you do. So say you, say you do business with someone, you have a big event or someone's a, you know, a new client or you hire someone or you work with someone or you see someone at a conference or something like that, you can always post about that. Um, you know, from LinkedIn and tag people. And that would also reiterate tagging on all the other accounts. But what I tend to usually do is I, I keep Facebook about one to two times a day. A few times a day for Twitter is definitely no big deal. Usually LinkedIn, I try to post live, like actually at, at, I don't schedule out my posts. So that ends up being about two to three times a week whenever I can find a good time within the day to do it. Um, and then Instagram, we would usually post about once a day uh, from the different channels that have Instagram for us. So I usually kind of just block out, you know, one to three hours in a week. That sounds like a lot, um, but really that's kind of to take the time to think about what I'm gonna post about, uh, making sure I actually write out the posts and then always having, you know, something kind of visual with my posts too, as much as I can. Another little thing I would encourage using emojis. Um, you know, I think that's definitely always a good thing. A lot of people think, should I use emojis? Does that look unprofessional? Um, but that tends to get better engagement on social media. And a lot of the posts that you see that have emojis tend to do better. And you always tend to like the ones that have those and they kind of seem more fun themselves. Um, and I know some of the uh, uh, people we have on the call, they do a really good job at social media. So I'd I welcome them to kind of chime in on some of the stuff they do. Um, the other little thing I would um, um, encourage is uh, just making sure you do have content out there on your social media account. I would think personally what I, a lot of times if I find like a new business, um, you know, whether it's a restaurant or really if it's anything, you know, any kind of service business, uh, you know, I was recently looking for painters personally like to paint my house. And, you know, if they have a social media account, I like to go on their social media and see if I can find examples of the work they done. So it's really important to at least just have some content on your social media because I guarantee potential customers are looking at your Facebook page and scrolling through the posts that you've done. Or looking at, you know, if you have a Twitter, looking at your Twitter and seeing what you've tweeted about. And, you know, it doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't even have to be every week, but I would try to get something up every few weeks so that there's at least they can kind of tell you're an active business that really goes to kind of authenticate your company, your business to consumers or to uh, you know, potential customers. So sorry to chime in, Julie. I just want to kind of add those things. Okay. So yeah, next, no, I, I completely agree with that. The next subject. Oh, I'm, I was going to ask, what is your routine for scheduling social media? Would you mind telling us? Kind of like, how do you do it? When do you schedule out? How far do you schedule out? Um, Dustin, you know that you're way more organized than I am, right? <laughs> well, I'm not um, so saying I, it's always every week like that. <laughs> um, I will say, yes, I wish I was more structured in this, but just in general in life, I'm, I'm not. Um, but yes, I do try to schedule out things. Um, an example of this is we did those Shawnee um, Economic Recovery Assistance, the Sarah Grants. Um, I knew that we had several open houses. Um, the deadline was March, whatever, 25th. And so that was something that I was definitely able to sit down, schedule out, like, hey, we have this open house tomorrow. Hey, it's today. Hey, the deadline's the 25th. Um, so I will definitely sit down and schedule something like that. Um, at the city, we tend to have a lot more things popping up all the time, right? And so um, I, I do a lot of scheduling for those longer term things. Um, and yeah, I probably should have like, okay, this is when I'm doing it, but I'm very, I'm a little fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to that. So um, just kind of whenever I get time to sit down and schedule is generally when I do that. Um, the other thing I will just really quickly mention is, um, and this is just kind of 
a little bit of a no-brainer, but maybe not. But um, be careful when you have stuff scheduled out of like what's going on in the world. Um, you don't want to have some major news event happening and you're posting about National Pizza Day, right? So you want to make sure that you're um, that you're just aware of what you have scheduled out, and then make sure to go back in and if you need to hit pause on that schedule or whatever, that you're able to kind of quickly do that. Um, you just don't want to seem tone deaf. You don't want to become um, part of the story about somebody who did something because they weren't, you know, they didn't know what was going on. So I would just quickly mention that. Um, so same thing with Dustin, I wouldn't say I schedule like super far out. I would say a week to two weeks at the most is generally what I do. And then just also to, you know, be, be aware of what's going on in, in the community and everything and make sure that some post that you do isn't seeming a little tone deaf. Okay. Next thing. Okay, is this me? It is. Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so direct mail. So I talked a little bit earlier at the city about how, you know, we are serving an entire community of different people, right? So we're ser we're serving um, residents, we're serving um, businesses, business owners, business goers, people who just visit the city. Um, so we've got a really wide audience. Um, so for you all, I would um, I would just you know recommend knowing your audience, right? Like who are you targeting? Um, who are you wanting to communicate with? Who is it most important um, that you are getting the word out to? So for us, it's a little bit different because it's like for the chamber, it's a little bit more targeted too, right? Like they have their members, but then they're also always recruiting. They're also always, you know, recruiting other businesses to come into the area. So, but um, but the cities is, is pretty wide. Um, for, for that reason, we do a lot of different types of marketing. Um, direct mail is definitely one of them. We have a an actually large part of our community that still really enjoys direct mail. I think there's a lot of people who immediately throw everything away, but there is a chunk of our community that really likes direct mail. And for some of them, that's how they find out their information, right? They're finding it out through, uh, we have a city line, which is a quarterly newsletter that's sent out our parks and rec department does a parks and rec brochure that's sent out three times a year. We do a lot of other direct mail with, uh, you know, Tidy Town. We recently sent one out for two of our task forces had some in-person meetings. And so that is another thing um, that we recognize that our community wants and that they, or at least part of our community wants. Um, and so it, it is a really important thing. So I think that while, you know, most of us, or I shouldn't say most of us, while, a lot of the trend seems to be going like online or social media. It is important to remember that there's probably a large section of your customers um, who, who do want direct mail and, you know, it's not cheap. Right. And so you kind of have to pick and choose when, when you're doing a mail and what you're doing it for, you know, is there a time when you can use it to get, um, the word out about more than one thing that you're doing. Um, so just to kind of think that through is important, but um, kind of identifying that I, I think is a is an important part if it can be something to work into your budget. Um, you can always um, target your existing customers only. Um, you can target specific areas, uh, just kind of whatever you think would best serve your your audience. And then Dustin, I think you were going to talk about the, the member serve. Yeah, yeah. And so one thing we do offer at the chamber is our member serve uh, kind of direct mail opportunity. Basically, when we every year we send out the Shawnee magazine to all of our members. Uh, so all of the member representatives get a physical Shawnee magazine mailing to them at their office address. And so one of the things we do offer. So if you're looking for like a cheap alternative to a full direct mail, um, you know, push that goes out to, you know, zip codes or to an entire city or whatever it may be, because those can get really pricey. You usually have to pay for the printed materials and then you have to pay to get it sent. And then there's a charge on top of that. Uh, but for us, we do offer something that goes in with all the Shawnee magazine to all the members. And it's about 1400 uh, copies that uh, we send out. And so if you want to include your business's information, you can do that with the chamber through our member serve. And what will happen is whenever we send out that Shawnee magazine mailing, you can also include a brochure or a pamphlet or a flyer to that. And that'll go out to every chamber member. 
So that's like one example of something you can do for direct mail. You can even do it through the Shawnee Chamber. We offer that twice a year. It's $250 is just the fee to be a part of that mailing. And then you do have to provide your marketing materials too. It's a really good cost effective version of direct mail. But I would really suggest to just in general, think about what you could do uh, to add this to kind of one of your components of marketing. Again, like Julie said, you can usually tend to target just specific areas. So if you're a business that tries to do you know, business within people who are near you, whether, you know, it's, it's all consumers or customers, or if you're just, um, if you have like a list of customers and you have all of their mail mailing addresses and, you know, that list is pretty significant, or even if it's small, you know, it doesn't hurt to think about doing something maybe once a year, just to remind them that you exist and to send something so that it hits their inbox and they do have to, you know, kind of look at you and be reminded of your business. Uh, in marketing, we think of all these terms and one of the biggest marketing term is marketing impressions. And that's essentially when someone sees your business, you know, they, they are, they get some kind of visibility of your business and they, they remember it. And that's just another really important marketing impression is for someone to get your information in like a mailbox. Our members serve as one opportunity for that. Uh, but typically you can go to printers. Printers will kind of have direct mail options and they can at least facilitate that with you too. So, you know, Shawnee Copy Center or any other kind of printer like that who is a member uh, will kind of help you through that process. So, anything else on direct mail? A lot of people ask questions about that, so we thought that would be a good thing to bring up. Cool. Okay, so the next one I will take, and that's going to be generally on the web. We'll kind of talk about website and other website presence that uh, you want to keep in mind. Um, but one of the big things I would suggest is when it comes to your website, a super important thing is to make sure it is mobile friendly and it stays up to date, uh, both visually, but also with content. So um, mobile friendly is really important because, you know, what do they say, like half of all, or if not more, uh, you know, is of uh, visitation to websites and, you know, is on a phone. Think about how much more you're visiting websites on your phone and looking at, you know, different content on the web versus just sitting down at your computer um, and doing that. So it's really important to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. If you're not sure if your website is mobile friendly, obviously take out your phone and check and see, but you can also do that from your computer too. Um, on a browser, when you open up your own website, you can right click and there's usually like a, a button that's called ins uh, inspect and that will allow you to kind of change the uh, dimensions of your website so that you can see what your look like your website looks like on a phone looks like on an iPad and then or, or any kind of tablet and then also looks like on a, on a, a desktop. Typically websites have about a three to five year shelf life before you want to start thinking about visually redesigning them. And that's because the code on websites will change over that time. It's because, you know, design trends tend to change over that time. So if your website is anywhere from five, you know, years older, it's probably time to start thinking about, do we need to refresh it? And what's that going to look like? And a lot of times when you think of, oh, I got to get a new website, you're thinking, oh man, I'm going to have to pay someone a ton of money to do that. Um, that's not always the case. I would also go back to kind of what we said about graphic designers. You know, you can always reach out to a big agency to see if they'll design you a new website. Sometimes it's going to be more expensive, but you can also look at freelancers. There's a lot of people who will do that kind of work from a freelance standpoint. Um, so we can give you referrals to that. Um, you can also tend to just find online companies that will do it. And when you do, the most popular website tools anymore are WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix. Um, there are a lot of other kind of platforms out there. From the Chamber, we use WordPress. Um, so all of our websites are in WordPress. It's very, very easy. You do not have to be a full on, you know, web designer or coder to actually go back in and edit things. And I know that the same goes for Squarespace and Wix. So I would really encourage you to just make sure you take a look at your website, make sure the content is up to date, make sure that it's mobile friendly, um, and then make sure that uh, you have you know, fun information on there. That's the other big thing is you're gonna, gonna wanna have clear call to actions, contact us, find our location, see our address, you know, sign up now. Those big things are gonna be really important. You wanna think about what's the purpose of your website. Uh, do you wanna get people to contact you? Do you wanna get people to buy something? Do you wanna get people to, uh, for us a lot of the, like one of the most important call to actions for the chamber is find out information about our events and programs because a lot of our value as a chamber comes through what we do from a programming standpoint so you'll see that on the on the slideshow on the very right the first thing once you scroll past our social media leaks you're going to see our big upcoming events so i would encourage you to think about what's on your website what's the most important information and have that right front and center because most people will go to your website kind of scroll right away and have a clear call to action 
Uh, for us, it's making sure that they go to our events calendar or go to a specific event, and then they, uh, uh, you know, can at least sign up now or uh, buy tickets. Um, another big thing is practice SEO tips. Uh, search engine optimization is um, really important. Obviously, you want to know what your website looks like on Google. One little thing to know about search search engines and your results is your search engine results will a lot of times, like if you Google something yourself, will be specific to your device and your IP address and what you search. So if you look up your own company's website, you will you might get a little bit of different results than someone who's never looked up your company's website. So if you're curious about how you're looking, how you're showing up in a search result feed, I would encourage you to ask someone else from their phone or from their computer to maybe look up your website because Google will start to change the way that your search results come up based on how many times you search for your own company. So if every time you open Google, you search for your own company to go back to your website, it's going to start to show you first. If you have someone who's never looked up your website and they search for your company's name, uh, you'll see exactly kind of where you fall in and what things look like. There's a, you could do a whole webinar and college class on search engine optimization and how to get your company way up to the top and stuff. What I would suggest is just finding websites that kind of help with that information. The one that I personally like I put on here is Moz, M-O-Z. Uh, it's a search engine optimization blog and like helpful resource. They basically have tons and tons and tons of content on there about how um, to get your you know search engine results like higher up and make them look better. They also have a toolbar that you can add to your browser like Google Chrome um, or any other browser like that that will show you um, what things are not working on your website from a search engine optimization. It's kind of nice. You can actually see like where you rank uh, through that browser. It's something if you're really kind of diving into your website and search engine results, you can really use Moz and it can be helpful. Another two little things that I would add on here is don't forget to update your chamber listing and your Google listing. A lot of times we think about our own website, but we don't think about where we're showing up outside of our own website. So you see, I put the Shawnee Chamber of Commerce Google listing up there. Uh, make sure you check and see what that information looks like too. That's really important because, you know, not only are people going directly to your website, if they're Googling for your business and then they're gonna try and see what's right, right up there on the right side. And it's pretty easy to, um, uh, go in there and edit the things for your Google listing. As you can see, uh, it says own this business down on the, the bottom of the screen clip that I put up there. I would encourage you to just kind of make sure that information is up to date. Make sure your hours are up to date. That's extremely, extremely important. And then on top of that, make sure that you do um, your chamber listing too. So everyone gets a chamber listing as a member of the Shawnee Chamber. A lot of times when I search for people's business, like our chamber members, their Shawnee Chamber listing will actually show up near the top too, um, which is really great. That is only going to help get your business more promotion. So you want to make sure that your Shawnee Chamber listing is up to date too with information um, as far as, you know, the description, the address, the hours and stuff. So um, it's just really important to not only keep in mind your own website, but keep keep in mind where your business is showing up across all of the web, uh, whether it's your Google listing, whether it's your chamber listing, um, or any other listings. If you have, if you're a member of an association, um, you know, I would encourage you to make sure that that listing is up to date because a lot of times those things will tend to pop up, pop up at the top of Google. So um, any other questions for SEO, you can obviously send us a chat um, or feel, to, feel free to kind of ask us questions. We can help as much as we know. So anything you want to add to that, Julie? No, you have way more knowledge on that than I do. So great job. <laughs> Okay, cool. The next one, I'll turn it back over to Julie, is kind of advertising on getting your info out there on a budget. Yeah, so obviously at the city, we are run on taxpayer dollars, and so we don't have super huge ad budgets. Um, so we just have to be kind of careful and targeted or really think through where where we're putting our ad money, right? So we so we do we do have an ad budget, and I will say we really make a point to do it in places where we're also supporting other local um, publications. So Dustin talked a little bit earlier about Shawnee Magazine, um, also the chamber events, um, anything like that. We are generally 
there, right? We want we want the city. We're a partner with the chamber. Um, we have an incredibly great relationship with all of them. Um, shout out to Dustin. Um, and so it, anyway, it's they're great to work with. We love having that relationship. We know that that makes our community stronger. The fact that we do have that. So we are in a lot of their publications. We're always in the Shawnee Magazine. Um, when those come out, we're always looking for opportunities like this to engage with the chamber and um, help get the word out there. We want to be a resource. And um, so it's, it's important to do that in a, in a number of channels. Um, another way that you can kind of place your ad dollars if you have a budget for that. Um, social media, Facebook ads are a great way to do it. Um, I think that can really help you get kind of more reach if you're if you're really trying to make a presence there and get the word out and you have something specific that you're working on. Um, we do that on a limited basis. We kind of recently um, had a budget for it when we did our comprehensive plan called Achieve Shawnee. Um, before that, our strategic plan called Imagine Shawnee. Again, it's different because it's a city thing, but same concept. Um, but we did a lot of open house events that we were really trying to get a lot of people out to. And so we did put some advertising dollars behind that on Facebook. And um, then what we also did to kind of make sure that we're um, getting a little bit of a return on investment for something like that is that if you are promoting a specific event, to ask those people when they come in, where'd you hear about it? And it's a very simple way to do it, but it's also a really great way. It's how we know direct mail is really important for us because a lot of times people will show up to events with the postcard in their hand. So we're like, okay, like we're getting the message across there. Um, so that that's just um, another thing is just to simply ask people where they heard about it and, and people will tell you. And um, so, so those are a couple ways as far as if you have an actual money have an actual budget for ad dollars um but again uh, i would also say you know shawnee mission post covers our area pretty thoroughly um so they're an online digital paper but they have opportunities to advertise with them um obviously the chamber is going to be a great resource for this as well with their shawnee magazine and tons of other opportunities within the chamber um but uh so i'm trying to think of what um else it, um any kind of the downtown partnership i'm sure has opportunities there as well to get involved um, so that's that's what to do if you have some if you have a budget for ad dollars. Really, if you're looking for kind of some free advertisement, um, I would say a, a simple thing that people think sounds um, not doable, but really is, is if you have a fun or important story to pitch to the media, um, we can do that. We're, we're happy to pass along. All of the local news stations have kind of general um, news tip emails that you can send into. And um, it, this is, I do this all the time at the city for different stories, right? Um, not only for our upcoming events and helping get the word out about that, um, but also if you just have like an an interesting story. Um, I'm trying to, I'm working right now with one of the station there. Um, our police department is doing a sensory friendly um, event and which I think is really unique and cool. And I knew that we had a local family who went last time who was very um, complimentary of it. And so I'm working with them and the police department, um, you know, to do an interview with a local news station so we can get the word out about the upcoming event as well. And um, if you get something on the news that is like, <laughs> Um, a really good way to get free advertising because they reach um, literally hundreds of thousands of people, and so that you're not that you're not going to reach on Facebook. We're not we're not going to reach them on Facebook. And so um, the other good thing about that is if it's a good story that's getting engagement for that news station, um, they're going to share it on their social media. That's going to get the word out even more. Um, so it it does need to be something more I think specific than we're having a sale for a hundred dollars off this. But if, if there is an opportunity or if you think that you might have one and you're not sure, um, please feel free to run it by me. I mean, I, I was I lived that world for 15 years. I, I know what people will pick out and do a story on and, and frankly what they won't. And I'm, I'm happy to tell you and I can quickly tell you. Um, so that, that's another good opportunity. So there's, you know, our local TV stations. 
the local papers, I mentioned the Shawnee Mission Post, they are always looking for things to cover. So um, that's another really good resource. And again, we can hook you up with kind of the reporters who cover our area on that. And then of course, radio and print as well. Um, so with the star. So um, anyway, if you have anything or any further questions about that, happy to um, kind of help navigate that as well. Um, I also touched earlier on giveaway swag. People love free stuff. Um, they just do. Whether it's, you know, koozies or coffee mugs or shirts or um, it doesn't have to be anything that expensive. We started giving out a lot of swag at Moonlight Market, not a lot, but some swag at Moonlight Market and like just the most random things were really popular. Like we had some light up bouncy balls with the city of Shawnee logo on them. And, and that didn't cost us very much at all or um, sunglasses that said, I love Shawnee. So anything like that, um, you know, if somebody's wearing your brand, like great, you know, I mean, that's helping get that word out. Or maybe it's a, a really fun idea for a t-shirt that then becomes like everybody wants that shirt because it's, you know, cool or whatever. Um, just, or it's just free, frankly. I mean, people aren't that picky. Um, so those are also uh, really good opportunities to, to promote your business and, and really get the word out there. Um, I touched earlier about participating or sponsoring in events. Um, there's obviously tons of sponsorship opportunities with the chamber, also with the city. Um, we have our Moonlight Market. If, if, if you guys haven't heard about it, it was just our new event that we started last year. Third Thursdays, um, May through October, uh, we have it in downtown Shawnee, we shut down the street, you can drink there, like it's very fun, live music, um, but definitely we have, we are, you know, deep in the planning for that, our first one is coming up May 19th, um, so like we have different sponsorship opportunities with if you want to sponsor the band, um, we'll put your name on a banner, we'll put it on our website, um, that's some kind of visual recognition there um, or if you just want to take part in it um, you know let us know and we're happy to help um, figure that out as well um, let me see okay yeah use hashtags and go live on social media um, a lot of this is kind of what we incorporated earlier but um, I would say right now again in the parade of hearts uh, obviously it, that's part of like the bigger parade of hearts but Shawnee got five hearts which is pretty awesome for a city our size. And so um, like right now we're doing an artist of the week spotlight. Um, we just did one on the one outside city hall. So a little bit more in depth about it, but we're like hashtagging all of that, right? And so that will um, get play in their feeds. The Parade of Hearts will hopefully share it. That might get, you know, new eyes on our social media as well. Um, we're gonna do a hashtag for the summer, um, I think it's actually, it's just, I haven't really asked anybody, but we're going to kind of do it um, like hashtag Shawnee summer. So we thought that might be fun as people are out and about at parks or any of our events or anything. If we can get people to start posting and, and hashtagging Shawnee summer, it's another good way. So like pick, pick a hashtag and, and go with it, you know, and, um, and encourage people to use it. And then again, going live on social media, you know, if you're having an open house or something and you're there, go live, like show people what they're missing or why they might want to come down. Um, and then, and then, yeah. And then I spoke a little bit more about the cost effective options. The other thing I didn't mention is the social media boost. Um, if you don't want to do a, you know, uh, just a paid ad, you can also pay to boost a post. So sometimes we did this a little bit when we're starting like new events that we want to make sure we're getting the word out about. And it's very minimal. I mean, like you can spend like, $20. And, um, and that will get, you know, th that will get you like hundreds, if not thousands of new views. So um, Facebook is another good way to do, you know, ad boost or um, paid ads to them. And it really is simple to do. They, you know, it's, they walk you through it. Um, and then you can see, you know, what's the reach, what's the engagement and all of that. And you can do it for a pretty minimal, I don't know that we've ever spent over a hundred dollars on one of them at one time. So um, it's another way to, to really help get the word out and do it in a pretty cost-effective way. Cool. I thought that was great. Well, I think really pretty much that kind of wraps up the big five topics we wanted to talk about. Those are really kind of top level marketing, um, you know, subjects. A lot of people ask, well, how do I do graphic design if, you know, if I'm not a designer and hopefully our the tools we suggested are kind of as a quick reminder, Canva is a big one we suggested. That's C-A-N-V-A. 
Biteable is a good video tool. I use personally, if you're gonna go into like an Adobe software, I probably use Illustrator the most. Uh, the big suggestion would be just YouTube, anything you are trying to learn. There are so many tutorial videos out there. I mean, everything from how to remove a background from a photo to how to, you know, change this logo to look, you know, change these shapes to do this thing and how to add text and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's so many, so many tutorials out there. Google is definitely your friend when it comes to graphic design. If you are not an experienced graphic designer, direct mail, Julie talked a lot about kind of their, uh, or social media. Sorry. Uh, we talked a lot about how we schedule our social media. Uh, Zoho is the tool that the city uses. Um, I do all of our scheduling natively through the apps themselves, which is kind of nice. It saves us a little money. It, I would say it is probably a little bit more work than doing it on one platform. So it's kind of, you know, one of those trade-offs you have to think about. Um, and we talked about, you know, making sure that you're just being fun and just definitely having content out there. Uh, we talked a little bit about direct mail and mentioned the member serve opportunity. And then the website I mentioned, just making sure it's mobile friendly, making sure it's up to date. Uh, thinking about redesigning it, you know, every five plus years uh, at least or so. Um, and then, you know, also ch checking your Google listing, checking your chamber listing, that's really important too. Um, and then we, we just kind of finished up here with talking about advertising on a budget. So that was just a quick recap. Does anyone have any questions? I see one came through the chat. Is it of any value to use a hashtag that you create and no one else is using? That's a great question. Um, I know you guys use a lot of hashtags. Julie, do you want to answer? Or do you want me to kind of, kind of put an answer out there? Yeah, um, I, I think, uh, so I think what you, I will say when we're choosing a hashtag, like a lot of times we'll choose one for an event or something, we definitely will go on Twitter and see, cause, cause, or, and Instagram, honestly, because that's really where the two big ones are, where people are, are easily following hashtags. And we will definitely go on there and do a search because we don't want, if it's already prevalent in another community, we don't want to then jump on it and have people get confused. Um, an example of that for us is there's a Shawnee, Oklahoma. And so uh, there are a lot of times that we will have kind of, or we'll get calls about Shawnee, Oklahoma or whatever. And it takes us a little bit to figure out once we, they start saying street names that we don't know. Um, so I definitely do a search beforehand. And I would say I definitely try to make it a little bit different um, just so you aren't confusing people. Um, and and sometimes like I think this happened with Moonlight Market. There it, there is a, of course another Moonlight Market somewhere, but it's a different time. So we didn't get as like worried about that because um, they weren't having it on the third Thursday of every month from four to eight. And um, so like while there is a, another Moonlight Market somewhere, um, it wasn't really um, competing with ours. We didn't think. And so I would be aware of the other hashtags that are there for sure. And if you think it might get confusing for customers, then I would try to do a variation on it to, to choose a different one. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that. I think, you know, hashtags have a few different purposes. One of them is to kind of create a common thread between different posts that are happening for like an event or a community, um, you know, or like whatever, when the Jayhawks win the national championship, everyone's, you know, po you know, doing hashtag national champions and things like that. Um, but a lot of times hashtags can also be useful for your own tracking. Um, you know, so if you just do a hashtag that's on your post, that's consistent, you can always on uh, Instagram or through Twitter or through Facebook, you can usually search just that hashtag and you can go back and see your own posts, say they get lost in the shuffle somehow, or you can at least kind of see what that common thread looks like. I think hashtags overall can be really Really valuable based on what you're trying to do. A lot of times people will also use hashtags on Instagram um, or really just across any of the channels to just get extra promotion. Um, I think, you know, that that can be effective. It may not always be effective, but, you know, you'll see a lot of times people have Instagram posts. If they're really trying to build an audience where they have tons of hashtags at the bottom to really try to kind of, um, you know, push their post out into like new channels. Um, some people on Instagram will actually follow hashtags. Um, you can actually do that if you didn't know that on your Instagram account. I'm pretty sure, I'm sure you can do it on Facebook and Twitter too. Um, but on Instagram, you can actually follow a hashtag and you can see posts that will come in through a hashtag. So if you did hashtag Shawnee, you can follow that and you can see everything that comes through there. 
So some people do choose to follow those. So um, using one that no one else is using, I think it's just a matter of what your what your what your kind of purpose is behind it. You know, some businesses they create their own hashtag and they just use that, and then over time they hope that that hashtag will kind of build its own brand in a way or recognition, and then they kind of have that whole history of that hashtag. So I don't think it's definitely um, worthless by any means. So. Any other questions, feel free to send them in the chat or if you want to unmute or um, any comments or questions, feel free to add them. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a good group on here and I know we've got uh, a few uh, familiar chamber faces who do marketing. If they had any suggestions, they're welcome to add those. Okay, cool. Well, not seeing any questions come through, which is totally fine. Um, well, hopefully this was helpful tips. Julie, is there anything that uh, you have to kind of add on the end? No, I just wanted to say thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we obviously love working with all of you at the, at the chamber, or at the chamber, apparently I'm at the chamber too, uh, at the city and the chamber. And if you all have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, we're, we're obviously here to help. We want to, uh, you know, be part of this community and make sure that we're all working together. Uh, just another tip I would say is if you if you don't know how to do something, just don't be afraid to ask. I feel like I um, ask tons of dumb questions all the time, and um, you know, it's better to know than not to know. So I would say if you're you know trying to figure out something on social media and you just don't understand it, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Dustin. Um, we're we're happy to help. We're we're here for all of you. Yeah, and I, I would definitely add, if anything, you know, you kind of wrote down and you have bigger questions, really curious about something, just feel free to send us an email. You have my email from the, the links that we send out, or you're always welcome to come to an AM Connect, one of our events at the Chamber. Um, I'm usually at all of those, and so you can always ask me in person there, too. So I think with that, we can go ahead and uh, wrap it up and, and call it a meeting. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.